Hi right, guys, this hopefully short video is going to cover the last week and a half um, working on this music video game. Uh, any issues or problems that we've faced and the solutions or potential solutions that we've come up with. Um, this is the 3D models asset list that I've been working through. I've done most of the stuff. We keep thinking of new things to add um, as we go. Um, the most important things we're missing, I think, I don't know why I've neglected, is balconies that could really help in the residential area and awnings. Um, <clears throat> and more pot plants, I think. Um, otherwise, we've got everything we need to start making the scene look really complete. Uh, so, I've been working off these um, Google image results for downtown Tokyo um, back alleys. Uh, these are a lot more narrow than what our game environment's going to look like since we have a uh, single car lane as well as footpath either side of that. Um, I've been experimenting with that, that width a bit because we want it to be claustrophobic, but we don't want to be so close to the buildings walking along the footpath that we can't see any of the detail unless we look straight up basically. So we can't have it this narrow. Uh, this is one of my favorite images here, a mix of um, residential and commercial. Uh, might not have talked about that yet, but we decided after our first client feedback meeting um, last Friday that we were going to split the game environment into three zones. So this would be more like a commercial and residential, um, more commercial, commercial, maybe residential, commercial, and then pure residential here. Uh, and this is an example of more industrial zone. So the character is going to go from industrial to commercial and residential with the game ending as the character gets home. Um, and the intensity of the music has three stages. It doesn't change too much, but in the most intense middle part of the track, you're going to be in the dense commercial zone with all the bright neon signs and more people moving around. Uh, that's something else I did this week. I animated um, a person, but let's just have a look through the models I've done so far first. I did some more buildings in 30 by 30 because uh, the buildings at 35 were getting really annoying to move in Unity. Um, in Unity, if you hold control, you can drag objects one Unity unit, which for us is 10 blocks because we're scaling everything here down uh, by 0 0.1. If you export something from Magic of Voxel as an OBJ, basically one voxel is one Unity unit or one meter in the game for um, all intents and purposes. Uh, so we're scaling everything down 0 0.1 and it was really annoying to snap these 35 by 35 buildings. So we're playing around with 30s and I like them a lot more like this one here. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. Um, got a ton of new buildings. A few um, environment props that are colored but don't necessarily glow, uh, such as these colored doors and cables and flags. Um, have headless humans because Paul and Isaac had an idea um, involving neon signs where in the commercial zone some of the humans just randomly have neon signs for heads and they, they look at you and um, have the same effect as the neon signs on the walls where they glow um, as you look at them. Um, I can't wait to see what that looks like. It's pretty trippy at the moment. I just have uh, this headless model. Um, I've animated, a fully animated one of these guys. Uh, and actually I was gonna do another one now for the headless. See how that comes up in Mixamo.com. Let's have a look. I've already um, rigged this one up, and so I'm just demoing some animations for it. Mixamo is great 
if you just want simple animations, um, I mean, we can tick in place and, and so the model will cycle in place and you can move it with um, script or animations. Uh, I was surprised at how good these looked, uh, the voxel rigged characters. Thought they looked really cool. Um, I'll probably be using this again in the future. You can even get, I believe, a whole locomotion pack. Locomotion. So you've got a male locomotion, a male locomotion pack, maybe. So that looks like a pack of 12 different animations. So it takes some setting up in Unity, but maybe I'll do a tutorial on that um, soon if I have time. I've been a little preoccupied with job seeking and um, driving for Uber for some extra cash. Um, right, so let's have a look at what that looks like in the game. Uh, this is my little animated default dude here, the T pose. Uh, it, um, Mixamo will just give you a T-pose if you ask for it. And it, as you can see, it's kind of distorted the mesh a little bit, but when it's all animated, it looks sweet. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, this is the effect, the colored signs and lamp posts, etc. You can see the door here isn't as bright as the neon sign. And not just because the neon sign has a light, um, same as these windows. So there's three different materials. There's um, the windows, the neon sign, and then the colored props. Uh, the only difference is the neon signs have this light, same as the lamp. They've got a light attached to them. Uh, um, actually, they're, they're a pair of materials because we're using a material.lerp function to move between two materials as you look over them. Uh, it's hard to tell, but the glass is actually transparent. So when it's dull, you can kind of see the environment behind it, not that there is any there. Uh, I've been working on this road that's tileable, so you can just um, snap a duplicate. Uh, I'll, just, I'll show you. If we control D and then hold control and drag, we're going to move one unity unit or one of these squares at a time. We can very quickly lay out a whole track here like that. Uh, that's part of why I've gone and made these 30s because if they move one unit at a time, they can um, snap to each other quite easy. I will just quickly Get a few more up. I didn't actually duplicate that one. It's just control D and control and drag on the axis. Um, just to make these look different now, I'll swap the mesh out with another mesh of a 30. Um, there's one. And that's the same one, but you get the idea. Um, so this is what I mean. Um, this street here is 70 blocks wide. Uh, and when you're walking along this footpath, looking up at this wall, it's like, this side's probably better. Walking along this footpath, looking up this wall, it's like it's right there. It's um, kind of annoying to look around if you're looking straight up. Um, but that could be interesting. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, just widen the road a little bit so the player's kind of walking on the road so well away from the buildings but not in the middle of the lane um, so that they would be hit by a car for example. Uh, what else have I done? So we wanted to have this effect where we separated colors um, on the screen. We we're going to use chromatic aberration but it only goes so far and if you play with the max values uh, it looks really funny. It really is just for the distortion on the edge of the screen um, to simulate 
like lens error in real life. But anyway, uh, we're gonna have to do something different if we want to separate colors in, in a um, more controlled way. Uh, for example, just moving one version of what's on the screen in red to the left and one version in blue to the right. Uh, so at the moment we just have the chromatic aberration and if we use anything that like changes dynamically to the beat, it's going to have to go off the, the rough BPM of the track because WebGL um, doesn't like to read audio information. I think it's something about how it's streaming um, or the limitations, uh, reading audio data like as it plays. It, it's a lot of information to read. And so if we were taking like peak volumes for different bands, sorry, not volumes, amplitudes for different bands, doing something with them, that's a lot of um, data to process at runtime. Um, and if it's not at runtime, if we save it, it could be hundreds of meg. Um, uh, another group have recently come up with this problem because they want to do a lot on the different bands and it just stops working when you build to WebGL. Um, and so you have to save the entire track, all of the information, or just do something simple like a beats per minute kind of effect. Another thing we can't do on WebGL is uh, screen space reflections. Um, it only works on a standalone build <clears throat> for PC, Linux, or Mac. <clears throat> the rendering path that you need to use for WebGL doesn't support screen space reflections. So we can't just tick a box and get that. Uh, if we were going to get reflections, we'd have to write a custom shader for the props uh, in the scene. Uh, at the moment, um, I'm getting this, this colored glow uh, below this light by ramping up the specular on this standard shader. Uh, but again, the standard shaders are quite expensive. Um, and an issue with them uh, we may have is because we've got an instance of a material um, or two instances sorry of a material on each one of these interactable objects uh, it can get quite gpu heavy um, gpu memory heavy i guess so when we start to really pack the scene with these interactable objects i'm really interested to see how it affects um, the web build. So yesterday at school, the other guys on the project gray boxed an entire uh, environment in Unity with the intention of working out how far the player will move in the length of the track at a walking pace. Um, so it also let us know uh, where in the environment we should start to ramp up the complexity. For example, is the track at, at like a minute and a half, the track starts to get more complicated and, and more intense. That can be the entrance of the commercial zone where there's a lot more going on visually. So uh, we map that out and uh, this is the sketch of some of the details and the kind of the layout, but then this is actually what it looks like in Unity um, after they pushed the, the movement node um, so that the player ended the music track here. Uh, so I'm going to be responsible for making an area roughly this big. So um, because we're handcrafting it, we don't want to spend too long doing stuff we don't need to do if the area is not going to be that big. Uh, it is a bit of a hassle to listen to the track and like move through an environment and, and quite time consuming. So another method of lining up the end of the game with the scene that the client wants, um, which is the player walking home and closing the door as the game finishes. Uh, we could have like an outro loop. So we've got some leeway there. Um, a really ambient kind of outro where it doesn't matter when we end the game and end the track with a door closing sound effect. Um, yeah, I'll do another video soon. Um, thanks for watching.